people have been coming to the shows, and I think they're under this impression that because they played a cover, they are now in this giant playland. And kind of like when you're in a maze at Knott's Berry Farm or a Halloween maze somewhere, they kind of think like, I'm just going to do whatever, say whatever, act however, and you shouldn't say anything and correct me because I paid a cover and I can come in and do whatever. Um, and that's not really the case. And I'm, and I'm going to say why it's not the case. And it's not up for discussion. I'm not asking for anyone else to tell me why I should see the other side. I'm telling you that there's only one side. And if you don't like that, then you disagree with me. Please, please, I beg of you to move on because you're not going to win. And there's not another option here. Okay, um, if you come to a drag show and you pay a cover, you're coming there to support the bar. Your cover supported the bar. When you sit down and you watch the show and you're quiet and you're engaging, um, and if you choose to tip, of course, tipping is, um, is, is your option. You're not required to tip, but it is part of the culture and people do enjoy it. And we certainly do make our living off of that, but you're not required. You paid to get in. Um, but if you make a reservation and you sit down and you want to watch the show, it is not about you. So think of it this way. If you go to a show, you're a drag show. It's live theater. Something is happening there. Whether these are Tony Award winning actors or Grammy Award winning singers, or they are Emmy Award winning producers, regardless of who they are, or VMA uh, winning, um, um, well, we don't have to go there. Do I? I don't want to really. Hold on. Let me get these names and just start, stop dropping them. I mean, I would say that that's a problem, but if they really are yours, you're not really bragging. Um, in any event, when you do come, I don't care if someone's announcing Sharon Needles. I don't care if they're announcing Robbie Turner. I don't care if they're announcing Gigi Good or Raja or Delta or Jewels of Long Beach or uh, Pussy McGillicuddy from wherever she's from. We got to have a little respect. In fact, we have to have a lot of respect because whether or not you enjoy what's on the stage, it is in fact on the stage. And so when you come and you talk the whole time at the same level as the person on the microphone, it is very, very, very disrespectful, not just to yourself because you look like a fucking asshole. It's also disrespectful to the host of the show who's trying to create a bridge between the performers and the audience. My job is to facilitate. I produce the show, but I also host the show and I also perform in the show. So I have three hats to wear all at one time. And when people say, well, I, I'm talking, I'm having a good time. I understand that. We're at a bar. We're going to talk. We're going to have a good time. But if the host is talking, saying, hey, this is what's happening, and you're standing up with a cocktail on the stage, and you're walking by, and you're like, oh, hey, bitch, and you're doing all this while someone is holding a microphone, you're, you're being extremely rude. You're being extremely ignorant. And um, it's really sad to see, and it's very, very... Uh, it's, it's just so very disrespectful. And it's disrespectful to everyone else who knows. See, you wouldn't do that if you went to a play. You would know better than that. But that's because you have a level of respect because you've been told, well, these are actors. So when you see drag queens, when you behave that way, it's because you don't have any respect for drag queens. And don't tell me for a second that you support drag. That's why you're seated here. That's why you paid a cover. No, no, you're supporting the bar. That's why you paid a cover. When you sit down and shut your mouth, pay attention and tip the entertainers, then you're supporting drag. See the difference? There is a difference there. Now say you don't have any money to tip the entertainers. You know what the biggest tip is you can give in general? Just your time. And if you sit down and you go, this is not good. I don't like this. I think this is boring. I think they could be doing more. That's okay. You can think that. And then you get up and you go, you know what? I, this is not for me. I'd rather see a better drag show than this. Not a problem. Go look for a better drag show. But for the time being, either stay seated and be quiet or go and play darts or go sit on the patio or just say, I don't like being here and I want to go to another bar. There's nothing wrong with that. But when you verbalize those things, it becomes highly disrespectful. When you get up and your whole group is celebrating a birthday and you decide in the middle of someone's Britney Spears number that you need to start singing happy birthday, you're fucked up. And you don't come from fucked up stock because I bet you your parents aren't that way. And even if they are, don't tell me you were raised that way. Because when you use the defense, well, I was raised this way. That says, I know it's wrong, but I don't want to fix it. 
I don't want to acknowledge it. I just want to tell you, I was told it was right one time, so I'm always going to do it that way forever. And then you wink at somebody like, you get it. I don't get it. You know better than that. Please, please, for the love of God. I spent the past two weeks at a couple of shows hosting the shows. And the people that came in, and the people that came in, there was a lot of really fun people that were enjoying what they were talking. And you're going to interact. You're going to go, oh, this is my song. Or, oh, the bitch, did she put that dialogue in there? That's funny. But when you stand up and you're just walking across the stage, just telling people, oh, well, this is, honey, who cares? And like, uh, or when you're, when someone's maybe they're doing like a ballad or they're doing a spoken word and everyone's kind of quiet for a second and you go, yes, bitch, you better tell her, bitch. And you're doing all this. It's not about you. It's not, it's why, if you want it to be about you, we've got plenty of amateur nights. We've got karaoke going on. Or you could just come to somebody and say, I want to do drag. How do I do drag? Because I want the attention the way that you had it when you were on the microphone. But don't have that attention while you're in the seat. You look stupid. You look so goddamn stupid. I wish you could know how stupid you look. And also too, just to add insult to injury, the worst, the worst experience of this is when it's a homosexual or a lesbian or anybody that falls under our umbrella that brings a bunch of people to the show and doesn't tell them, you know, I know you're a loud mouth. I know you like attention. This is not the behavior at this type of live theater. When you don't say something, you're their chaperone. You are their only line of defense between what's happening in the show and what's happening uh, with your friends. So you need to connect that bridge. Love can build a bridge. Don't you think it's time? Wynonna Judd and Naomi Judd asked you that. It is time. It's been time. It's done been time. Inform your friends, please. Because then I only have a problem with you. I had this homosexual at the show the other night. Baby, I understand if you're from a small town, you don't have a lot of gay friends. You know, you don't know what you, you, you want to hang out. So, so you're hanging out with a lot of the, you know, uh, comfortable in skin, heterosexual women that want to go out and have a good time. And you're their fun gay. Um, you have a lot of weight on your shoulders. What you have on your shoulders is that you are the ambassador. You are the chaperone and the ambassador that when they come in, you need to tell them, don't pull on the wigs. Don't get up and tell somebody your makeup looks better than mine. Don't get up and um, try to tip people and then pull the money away. Don't do any of that. So when I see that happening and I see that one gay that's sitting there dre dressed to the nines in their Zara outfit or whatever they think is the nines, um, swirling a drink like this and going, yes, bitch, yes, girl. The only people that are impressed are those people that never get to go out and are with you and think that you are the gay community. So when you bring them and you do that, you're really, you're not just slapping us in the face, you're shitting in our mouths. So when you do that shit, I have a problem with you. And I usually start out simple. And that's what I did the past few days. I, you know, start out simple. Hey, you got, hey, what are you doing over there? I know you guys are ready to party tonight. I can tell, but I'm going to need you to, you know, regulate it for me with me. I'm going to need you guys to watch out for this crowd. I try to get them on my side, right? I've been doing this for almost 30 years. I've been doing it for 30 years. Um, try to get them on my side. Then it was sarcastic. Uh, I know I'm not supposed to mess with Texas. The people were a few people from Texas. No, I'm not supposed to mess with Texas. So I'm not going to mess with you. In fact, I need you on my side. Then it got sarcastic where I was like, okay, no, no, they're not understanding. And this is happening throughout the show. Then it's sarcastic. Then it is sardonic. Then it is um, point blank. Then I have to get rude. Then I have to start involving other people. What that does is it makes everyone else watching the show be uncomfortable. But as I said, I'm wearing three hats. I'm the promoter. I'm the producer, I'm the host, I'm the entertainer. And I'm losing credibility with my entertainers that are behind the curtain that are going, why can't she get them to stop talking? And you know why I can't get them to stop talking? Because there's things like Yelp and Facebook where people who are absolutely in the wrong don't like to be corrected, certainly not publicly. So when they are, they feel shame. And when they feel shame, they like to find reasons why people should know that they shouldn't have been shamed. Well, you shouldn't have been shamed because you singled me out. You singled me out because of all of these different factors of who I am. So you decided it was about that, not about my behavior. So they start gaslighting and they start doing all these things. Then that risks my job. It got to the point at one point where I said, I had to say to a group of people, I'm begging you, 
I am begging you. I want you to know that you have full power here because I know that you will go on social media and you'll say something because I corrected you too many times. But I ha it's so, it was, it was humiliating. But it's gotten to that point now where I'll, I would say the majority, not all, but the majority of the places that I work at will absolutely, the people will behave that way because people have stood by for so long. You know, we today we just realized Elon Musk has bought uh, Twitter. You know, he's probably going to shit all over that and then that'll get ruined for everybody and he'll probably shut the whole thing down or start charging people tons of money, whatever. Um, people have been, have felt worthless for a long time. You know, especially when Donald Trump came into presidency, people started to feel bad about themselves and they started to realize that they had no autonomy. They had no control over any situation. So what would they do? They would start, that's where this Karen and, and cancellation, you know, all that came up because people started going, I'm just going to turn my camera on. And the second somebody looks at me sideways, I've been victimized. I'm going to tell everybody. And it's important to have that footage, but it's not important when you walk into a business with your camera rolling and you're going, what did you say? You looked at me sideways. Oh, you did that for this reason. And then it becomes fucked up. So when people are, uh, when people do have those experiences, it waters down because no one believes them anymore. Because everyone's saying, well, this happened, that happened, this happened. The, the girl was a bitch to me. That, that drag queen was a bitch to me. Which the other interesting part is how often I do experience that people really, really, really love mean drag queens. I don't know what it is, but I'm telling you, from somebody that was doing drag in the 90s to the early 2000s to the beginning of RuPaul's Drag Race, now to the wild success of RuPaul's Drag Race, to drag cons for, what, seven, eight years that I've been doing drag con, um, people love it. I'm telling you, I don't know who, I don't know who you are in here. There's 80, 80 people in here. I guarantee you 40 of you love it when the big names of RuPaul's Drag Race shit all over you. You would love, you would, because I get them. I get people that, and I'm not even a big name from RuPaul's Drag Race. I get people who send me cameo requests that go, will you read my friend? Fucking let that bitch have it. No, I won't. I won't read your friend and I won't let that bitch have it. I don't know your friend. You don't walk up to strangers and read them because it's funny. It's not funny. It's insulting. It's cruel. It's vindictive. There's a problem with that. So what happens is people watch the queens do it and they love it. And they pay $300 for meet and greets to have people talk to them with stoner jokes and really, really bad manners. And it blows my mind. So then, you know, I'm hearing of that happen. And then I hear of like people that are gracious or are having a good time or are present in the conversation. People are like, nah, I don't like that. I'm not going to support that. But they, when they do need it, they're like, I'll just wait for that person to go on Instagram Live and I'll listen to them do it. But these other ones that I really need attention from, I need to go pay $300 or $50 or whatever to get it from them. I'm not going to support you because I can see you anytime. I know it's happening. It's fine. I know it's happening. But what I'm saying, um, yeah, it's not only the younger gays. I hope I didn't say it was the younger gays or suggest that, uh, Mariah's Lambie. I hope I did not suggest that. Uh, I'm telling you, in my experience this weekend, that's who I experienced, for sure. Um, thank you, Ishi. So, you know, I just, it's weird. But I had to tell you, it was, and I'm being honest, like one-on-one, -on -one, well, one-on-89. One um, 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 I... It was, it was degrading, you know, it was honestly degrading because like I said, pe people feel, people feel bad about themselves because of the situations we've all been thrust into and they want other people to feel that bad. So because they want other people to feel that bad, they want you to know, you don't tell me what to do. I do what I do. And that's what they do at these shows as audience members. I, I was just talking to a friend today at lunch. But what's been happening lately is a lot of people 